discuss that big story. The island of its fallout continues to be felt. In the latest, Crystal has downgraded the Jharkhand Road Project SPV on default fears and claims that the island of its management has reversed their earlier stance of maintaining an integrity of ring-fenced structures. What would the impact be? Uh, what's the total quantum of bonds? What is the exposure that banks have? Sandeep Parikh, the founder of FinSec Law Advisors, joins in. TN Arun Kumar, the executive director of Care Ratings, and Lakshmi Ayer, the CIO debt at Kotak Mahindra AMC also joins in. Um, lady and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining in on the show. Uh, Lakshmi, I want to just start uh, with you. Can you tell us what the quantum is of outstanding bonds for these SPVs and what is the quantum of bank loans for all such SPVs that have this exposure? So, uh, in case of the SPVs, currently uh, there are about four to five SPVs uh, within uh, mutual funds in terms of holdings. The amount would be in the ballpark region of about uh, two to two and a half thousand crores. Uh, banks, I'm not too very sure, but what I read uh, is the number could be in the band of maybe 15 or 1,000 crores. Uh, I don't have the precise number, but mutual fund, the number would hover in this particular band. And this is spread across uh, four to five SPVs. Uh, across uh, various schemes in the mutual fund industry. Okay. Mr. Arun Kumar, uh, good morning, and you would know that best. Uh, first of all, have your, do, are you rating any of this, Jharkhand, Jorbat, Hazaribagh, uh, Karnataka Expressway? Any of these uh, do you rate, and have you rated them default? Yeah, we do rate, uh, but I'd like not to comment on uh, individual credits today. Uh, just on no, no, if any, any decision has already been taken and you have already sent no, we it will to... We uh, announce it as and when a decision is taken. We are, we, are, uh, we are up to date in our website, so one can look at it in our website as to the latest rating. Okay. Then how do you look at this event? Uh, we have that letter that uh, 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 Jharkhand Road Project pa uh, Implementation Company has written to IDBI trusteeship not to release any further money. Uh, it's, yeah, it stands like, uh, to reason that sooner or later the dividend will not come on the NCDs. Yeah, yeah, see, the, the, you know, the whole uh, concept is here of the sanctity of shareholder versus company separation, you know. So when we rate a company higher than the share, higher than a entity, uh, the sponsor mm -hmm. entity, mm -hmm. the reason for that is the cash flows are ring fenced and we have a legal separation, insulation of, uh, you know, the legal entity per se from the other entity so that there is a bankruptcy remoteness of the structure. Mm -hmm. So in these kind of cases, it kind of questions the very basic uh, assumption made by rating agencies. It's not mm -hmm. only here. It's for any uh, SPV transaction. It's for any securitization transaction. There with the bankruptcy assignment, uh, I mean, remoteness yeah. after assignment of these receivables is kind of assumed and that is the reason for the ratings to be higher than the base entity. Yeah. So these kind of, uh, kind of events, uh, you know, question that and we have to see the legal aspects of mm. uh, what, what, is, what is it going forward and what is this okay. uh, no, going to... No, well, one forward. rating agency has already moved on the basis of that letter that mm. uh, this is not bankruptcy remote and the ring fencing is not uh, valid uh, mm. or is not going to be respected. It, it has already moved it to double B. So mm. is it logical that others will be moved down? Or will you all just wait for the entire event to play out? Are you going to, you know, touch base with the uh, current management of ILNFS? Uh, what is the event you are waiting for? No, see, I'd like again, not going into the specific event, but I think we have we have taken a rating action here too, in Jharkhand too. Okay. Uh, based on, see, whatever rating action we take, we have to be based on a particular document or a particular interaction with it and our view on the same you know mm -hmm. uh, what pans out later sometimes unexpectedly something pans out and you know sometimes uh, you know mm. um, sometimes the trustee gives the confirmation that and there is this payment will be made and and uh, the banker ultimately who has to act who doesn't make the payment and okay whatever reason yeah that's so, what we were told yeah. okay okay uh, mr arun kumar first let me get the facts right what is the number what is the total exposure of mutual funds to the uh, debt instruments of the I, SPVs. I'm sorry, I don't have, I and don't the have banks? that information. Okay, you don't, don't have, have the total. Information. Yeah, yeah, okay, have well, let's get Sandeep Parekh also on board. Uh, Mr. Arun Kumar and Lakshmi Ayer request you to just stay on. Uh, Sandeep, uh, you know, if the ILNFS SPVs don't pay up, then what is the impact you see on, say, the uh, structured finance market as a whole? I think uh, <clears throat> it will have an adverse impact because the entire concept is of, you know, having setting up SPVs is to have bankruptcy remoteness that the impact of the shareholder or the parent company has no impact 
on the special purpose vehicle. In fact, that's why they're called SPVs, because they're supposed to be completely independent of their, their, their parents. Uh, not just uh, bankruptcy remoteness, but also uh, the uh, you know the payments, etc., the ratings, everything is supposed to be independent. So the only time you can really uh, unravel that uh, when you can lift the corporate veil is when fraud is involved. Now here the question is, uh, where is the fraud? Fraud is uh, if the fraud is not at the SPV level, I don't think it's permissible to really raise it. Uh, but uh, again, having said that, I think you know graveyards have a stability which few other places have. So <laughs> we really won't know till uh, till, till it's too late what the probabilities are uh, in no, terms but, uh, of the, but the Sandeep, payoffs. You know, if you're and, advising, and, uh, if you're advising mm. any of these funds or banks, what would you do as a next step? Would you legally proceed, uh, go to the NCLAT and tell them that this is a different structure and therefore the so-called Clause 6 of the NCLAT order needs to be changed? What do these guys have? I mean, they have a legal case because the structure is ring-fenced. What can they do about it? No, sir, I don't know the exact legal proceedings which are, uh, you know, the, the para which you mentioned. But, uh, but of course, they would have a legal remedy. When um, there is a legal wrong, there is a legal remedy. So they will either go to NCLT or if that's, that doesn't work out, they'll file a writ in the high court. But I mean, certainly, if they have uh, an asset under their, uh, you know, uh, for, to with their entitled, uh, they should be able to uh, fight it legally. So I mean, that's, that's a clear concept. Uh, having said that, of course, as I said, you know, rating agencies would look, look at the real probabilities and not at the legal probabilities because uh, uh, le legal processes do take time and mm. many of these are very time bound and therefore the consequences can, can be quite sudden rather than you know the legal process which takes months and years at times. So. Okay, so Arun Kumar, what would be the real possibility? Because this is ring fence, does it only go to double B? And uh, will what, after all we only know of the letter written by Jharkhand Road Project to its trustee. Uh, would you therefore willy-nilly assume that will be the status for Jorbat, for Shillong, for all the other SPVs? And what is the real issue? You, do you keep it at double B and not go to D because you still want to know whether the ring fencing is valid? Yeah, see, uh, when we do a review of a rating, it's based on the information we have at that point of time. And as things develop, as different parties, you know, spell out their uh, status or their stance on different things, we have to act on them. See, by my face, we don't assume that these things will happen. Oh, these things are surprise events. You know, these things that yes, they are surprise the events. But now that it has happened, how are you going to react? Will no, you as consider per the, as it per default? The regulations, yeah, as for the regulations, we are supposed to anything close to uh, uh, you know uh, what do you call probability of default being very high uh, is being uh, as per the definition of a D mm. is either in default soon or will likely to be in default soon. Oh. So based on that, uh, we'll have to act. I mean, either uh, whenever we uh, get to that conclusion that it's likely to get uh, likely to default or it has okay. already defaulted. Okay. Uh, Lakshmi, uh, come in on this. You said that the exposure that mutual funds have is about 2,000 to 2,500 crores. How would you be valuing this now? I mean, will there be a significant markdown that you're looking at? Uh, so, A, uh, at Kotak Mutual Fund, we don't have any exposure to these SPVs, uh, but from what we are tracking uh, from the rating rationales and the rating press releases, uh, uh, there are uh, at least uh, three to four of them which were mentioned, two of them which have a triple ASO rating, and one of them which is a Jharkhand in question had a double ASO rating, which has already got downgraded to double B as we speak uh, over the weekend. Uh, at this current juncture, as per the valuations, any which ways below investment grade, uh, one will need to apply a, a prudent haircut because the third party valuing agencies do not give a valuation price for that bond. So it will uh, depend upon uh, the respective fund houses to take a call how exactly they want to value it because it is below investment grade, but it is certainly not D as we speak right now. Okay, so you, you would value it at what? 80%, 70%? to the rupee so if we see if we see the precedence uh, what happened uh, in the case of uh, ILNFS which happened in the middle of September the moment it went below investment grade uh, uh, most of the fund houses uh, took yeah they valued it at about uh, 
75 percent. So they actually took a, a knock of about uh, 25 odd percent. But again, as I said, this is not the rule of the thumb. This is what we've observed in the past cases. My sense is that similar thing would have got applied. We need to see the uh, NAVs uh, uh, which have got published today and then probably arrive at that. I have not seen that as well. And if it goes to D, what is the valuation? Because there is still that ring fence available at some point in time, you will get back the money. So if it is D, how will you value it? So I think uh, below triple B minus, the moment it goes below investment grade, uh, as I said, the yardstick of whether applying a 25% haircut or a 50% or a 100% uh, is, as you rightly observed, a function of how tight the structure is. Uh, you're absolutely correct. In this particular case, uh, it is an SPV uh, where there is an escrow account and the cash flows are actually flowing in. Uh, but obviously, in, in uh, you know, as prudence prevails, we've seen uh, uh, rating agencies uh, downgrade it uh, to below investment grade because of this uh, uh, you know the uh, letter which has been written to the trustees there is ambiguity at this point in time no two ways about it how this will pan out uh, will be obviously a function of what is the subsequent action the rating agency will take and of course the concerned mutual funds okay uh, mr arun kumar i don't know if you've mentioned this but has jharkhand defaulted on the interest payment that was due I'm not aware. I'm not aware. This was uh, the money I was to come. The, the money was to come yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't have the recent uh, latest information. We've been following up. Uh, but you have uh, a rating on Jharkhand. Yeah, we do have. Yeah. And is it at double B now? Yeah, double B minus. Double B minus now. Okay. If their uh, money didn't come, hypothetically, then it goes to D. Yes, yes. It is uh, not paid one day one rupee is the rule. Okay. Uh, then it doesn't. Uh, Okay. Okay, okay. All right. I think we'll have to just wait. Uh, Sandeep, uh, does this make all infrastructure financing difficult now, uh, this situation? Or do you think it's just a temporary problem that the NCLAT order has created and it will get resolved? I think it should get resolved. But, you know, having said that, uh, it will have an impact and people will have to take a call. I think this is a great example where people should not blindly follow what the rating agencies say because ultimately, you know, they will need to take a judgment call on what are the probabilities based on facts and probabilities based on the legal outcomes after, let's say, six months or three months. So based on that, each each fund will have to value uh, their NAV separately and they will all have to take calls. There's, there, there are no free lunches available here. But they'll all need to figure out whether they should market, not market down at all, market down 10%, 20%, 50%. I don't know. They'll, they'll all have to take a call and uh, not a single one of them is, go is going to be exactly accurate. Yeah. So oh. we'll, we'll just have to wait and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. wait for time to figure, uh, solve that riddle. Okay. But in the meanwhile, an investor who is taking out his money today will be hurt if, uh, the va uh, if it is marked down too low and will be advantaged if it is not m marked too low. So there could be, uh, you know, discrimination between investors uh, and investors of various funds. Okay, right. uh, this is a tricky problem. We will have to see how it gets resolved. And uh, basically, whether somebody approaches the NCLAT itself and asks them to reconsider. Is that a possibility? That someone can go to the NCLAT and ask for a review of the order, uh, Sandeep? Yes, yeah, certainly. I think it can. anybody who is aggrieved by the order can go to the NCLAT and ask them to review that portion. And, you know, if that doesn't work out, they can file a writ or so, some other legal uh, process. So my guess is that it would get sorted out. But again, that's in the legal world, there's, there's no guarantee. And, you know, if, if it gets sorted in the Supreme Court, it may take another year or two. Okay, uh, Sandeep, Arun and Lakshmi, thank you so much for joining us and, uh, you know, giving us more clarity on this entire issue. This will be an ongoing debate, but we need to get back to the markets now because the markets are falling. The Nifty is down almost about 50-odd points and uh, a lot of auto stocks are coming under pressure now. m and Maruti, ahead of its numbers on Friday, is down about 1.5% and Tata Motors as well is down. From the larger caps, uh, Infosys is dragging its feet now, down almost about 1.5% or so. So overall, market mood is not good. Advanced decline ratio is quite weak this morning. That's something to look at as well. Yeah, that's been the case, Sonia, for some time now. Uh, you know, 1 is to 2, 1 is to 3. Today also about 1 is to 2. I think uh, uh, if you see today, uh, what's really been the... The pressure point is the two leading stocks of the market, and that that is always going to be a problem for the market. That you know, in a bipolar market, if the market leaders slip a bit, uh, I think we have three leaders basically: Reliance, uh, 
Yes. Infosys and Kotak Mahindra Bank. I think Kotak is somehow still holding on, uh, but uh, Reliance is falling off a bit today and Infosys. Uh, uh, let's see if uh, there's uh, some some kind of support here. Uh, uh, the good thing is Bank Nifty is outperforming today, entirely because of Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, but uh, uh, And that's also very close to its 20-day uh, moving average support mark as well. So th that is quite interesting. But on the Nifty, I think it's uh, clearly an indication that, uh, once again, that 11,000 has been rejected a bit. Okay, well, with that, uh, let's move to the earnings uh, analysis. LNT Finance saw a big decline in its disbursements growth uh, due to, of course, the corporate book. But assets under management growth was steady. Uh, Dinal Adubashi, Managing Director and CEO of LNT Finance Holdings, joins us now. Uh, Dinanat, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. First, uh, uh, an overall question what has been the impact of the liquidity crisis uh, in the last week of September uh, to now? for NBFCs like you, there was a fall in your disbursements by 20% year-on-year and 18% quarter-on-quarter. Actually, the if impact of, uh, <clears throat> of the liquidity can be seen in three phases. So uh, there was a time up to, say, about 16th of October when there was no liquidity in the market. Uh, from 16th October to 10th December, where liquidity was available more selectively, available more to good companies like us, uh, and then from 16th of December till the end of the quarter, liquidity was easy, albeit at a higher cost. So the impacts have been following. Number one, of course, as you see, as we have guided, the uh, weighted average cost has gone up from Q2 for 8.33 to Q3 to 8.5. We had guided around 8.55 or so. Uh, that has happened. But we have been able to pass on the increase completely. And as you would notice, from quarter to quarter, our NIMS have actually remained steady at 5.01 and NIMS plus fees also around the range that we have been showing. How that we have, how we have done that? One is of course by passing of uh, uh, the interest cost to customers, but more the strategic uh, uh, intent has been uh, that whenever, you know, in, uh, at the very beginning of the quarter, we made very clear to our businesses which business will get the first fund allocation. So uh, it was made very clear that our retail businesses, that is rural and uh, retail housing, will get the first right to liquidity, then selectively to our core infra and real estate, and businesses like structured finance or DCM will take the last seat. Because of this, you would see that the overall growth we have maintained well at about 24%, and uh, NIMS have remained steady, and the profits we have actually delivered our best ever uh, profits with uh, you know all the um, all the ratios, all parameters working very well. So uh, yes, liquidity has been a problem, but I believe that we have handled it uh, pretty well, and now Q4 the situation has improved uh, quite a bit already. Okay, uh, Mr. Dubashi, you know, I wanted you to talk to you about ILNFS because once again those issues are coming back uh, to haunt investors. What's your own exposure to the ILNFS group? Is it to the holding company or an asset level exposure? And are they standard or NPA? How much provisions have you made so far on it? We have about 1800 crores exposure to ILFS SPVs. So we have no exposure to ILFS, we have no exposure to IFIN, we have no exposure to ITNL. We have got exposures to six road SPVs. All of them are operational. In fact, last quarter when we said five were operational, one was under construction. Uh, after three months, we can happy to report that all six are operational, out of which four are annuity projects where money comes directly from government, two from government, uh, you know, either government of India or from Jharkhand government. And uh, two are toll projects where the toll record is quite, uh, you know, in keeping with the projections. So uh, the, you know, the, the, uh, the TRA accounts or the escrow accounts are quite full. And uh, as of 31st December, each of these accounts were absolutely current. Let us take in worst case scenario that the moratorium on even normal repayment is upheld. Worst case scenario, we believe that it will not happen. Even then, we believe that the loss given default on the projects that we have is nil. And uh, have, even in the worst case scenario, we don't see any loss given default. And under and hence, we have, since we have already moved to index, we don't see any need for provisions. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dubashin, in December, we had broken a story that your MFI business in Odisha and West Bengal was seeing some pain. So if you could tell us the, the exact impact uh, uh, in the MFI books of these two states. Orissa, the issue is there, and I'm saying Orissa, not West Bengal. West Bengal is absolutely clean, no problem. 
Orissa, there was a different issue. In some parts of Orissa, there was a practice which we call, uh, you know, it was not a good practice in the in the in the some of the villages where some ringleaders were uh, going behaving as go between between the industry and our companies and the borrowers. The moment our audit department found that out, we completely stopped this uh, this practice of uh, you know involving ringleaders. And obviously there was some backlash coming from that. As we speak today, I am glad to say that we have anything which is 61 days and above, which is about 75 days, uh, 75 crores, we have completely provided, 100% provided. And some, anything that is 31 to 60 days, which you would think is well into GS2, we have provided up to 70%. That is another about 70 crores. Uh, so uh, the Orissa problem is behind us even in Q3. We have uh, more than enough provision for dealing with whatever this uh, problem was. Okay. And uh, finally, uh, Mr. Dubashi, uh, your, for the first time, your ROE has declined uh, on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. What would your outlook be on ROE? Okay, so I I know a few basis points here and there. Quarter to quarter results, uh, it is uh, not neither my job nor my endeavor to maintain you know few basis points uh, here and there of ROE. Uh, the outlook is very simple. The way we will maintain what we what we promise to maintain is a top quartile ROE. Uh, how we will maintain that is to steady growth CAGR over the next five years of 18 to 20 percent. One maintaining our NIMS plus fees, maintaining expenses low, and most importantly, continuously improving asset quality. And you would see all these things moving in the right direction, right? Uh, of 15, 20 basis points here and there of ROE, quarter to quarter, I don't think can be explained and should be explained. Okay, fair enough. We'll take that point on board. But you know, last time you had mentioned that you have exposure to three projects of super tech at around 800 crores. Uh, what's the update on that account now? So the amount is largely still the same, but the, the status on the projects is very good. As I had said last time, uh, that all those three projects were good, they were, the sales were good, the construction was happening well, collections were good. So I can confirm that uh, you know, some of the progress, that the construction is happening well on time, progressing well. Uh, sales, we have actually, we have appointed a specific sales agent to push sales even more. Uh, and we have actually got some prepayment uh, uh, coming out of that also. Uh, but most importantly, we have a very specific plan to uh, keep, you know, make sure that the projects are complete, make sure that they are sold. There are also certain asset monetization plan of the promoter. And we are quite confident that uh, whatever happens to Supertech uh, as a company, we will make sure that our projects are completed and sold and we get out uh, successfully of that. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dinarat Dabashi, for joining us with all those uh, details of your numbers.